Hello and welcome to the Cutie Art Crusaders, episode 51 for June 18th, 2013. Welcome back. I am doing the intro today because unfortunately we do not have a certain someone with us. But before we go into that a little bit more, uh, let us introduce ourselves. Um, my name is Burned Plasma <laughs> and I am the host for today and the editor. And today I'm also joined by... I am Flutter Plasma 317 and I am the <laughs> art coordinator for the podcast. And uh, going by this theme, I'm Pinky Plasma. Hey, that, that works best. <laughs> I am Pinky Plasma and I'm also rather sick, so didn't expect to hear much from me today. Yeah, poor, no. poor um, Pinky Dash has got some stomach flu or something, I don't know. I hope you feel better, buddy. Mm, me too. Seriously. You shouldn't. Mm -hmm. You gotta eat less ponies. <laughs> But no. <laughs> that's what that's what the assassin monkey always says. He's like he goes off and takes a nap, or he doesn't sleep for like twenty four hours, and he takes like a four hour nap, and he woke up. He's like, I woke up and ate some power ponies, and I'm good to stream. Like, <laughs> crazy. crazy. I'm anyway. so confused. <laughs> but okay, we'll go but with no, it. <laughs> horse meat is delicious. They, they put it in burgers and stuff. Oh no. Anyway. Anyhow. Anyway. We're missing plasma. <laughs> Yes, uh, um, we're we're st we're missing Rainbow Plasma today, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, he ha has a new job, so he has a different work schedule. Um, so our normal recording day doesn't exactly work very well for him. So, unfortunately, we have to record without him today. And then he's going to be editing this episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, good stuff. Yeah, uh, sucker. He does all the work. It's great. Hence why we're going to keep joking about him all this episode yep <laughs> yep uh, okay do we have any other talking points yes uh we have a couple um we put out a journal last week uh about our one year anniversary which is actually one week from now um with our 52nd episode on june 25th which is so exciting um and we are doing a two episode special the first part is basically uh we're coming up with some stuff for you guys uh so it's special yeah it's kind of a secret um but in the second episode uh we have a couple of things that uh you guys can submit in and we kind of want to feature it um so we'll put a link to the journal in the description of the youtube video um basically we're looking for just like a minute long snippet um of audio or text basically uh saying why you watch our show um, or you can send us in some one year fan art, um, kind of like anniversary celebration. Yeah. 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 So I can't, <laughs> it's, it's like, it's kind of mind blowing that we've been doing this for a year now. Right. It's yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. You're not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, uh, um, one more thing is we are all going to Everfree Northwest. Um, I don't think oh, we actually we? brought this up on the show yet. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, so, I don't think we have. No. That's so, news to, that's, uh, news, that's news to me. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we're flying you out here. Ah. <laughs> Thank you, Dash. No. Um, yeah. So, uh, we're all going to Everfree Northwest. So, uh, if any of you are there, it would be totally awesome to see you guys. Get to meet the fans. Yeah. So, if anyone's interested in meeting any of the CAC, because Pinky Dash actually will be flying his. But all the way from Australia mm -hmm. to Everfree Northwest to join us. He's um, he's got to flip upside down halfway through the trip, but you know, it's worth it. So we'll probably be <laughs> hanging out around the out around the um, con everywhere. Um, we might actually make a little day where we sit down at the uh, Everfree Network table if they have a table again this year. I'm not sure if they will, um, but if they do, uh, maybe we'll make a little announcement. But anyway, yep. so look forward to that. Watch us and follow us on Twitter and stuff because we'll probably be tweeting about it because blogging. Um, anyway, <laughs> so what's our theme for today, Flutter Guy? Oh, wait, 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 wait. One more thing. We uh -huh. have to acknowledge that you are now a pizza chef. Hello, it's Rainbow Plasma editing myself in because I can do that occasionally as well. Uh, you haven't forgotten about me? You've been gone for five minutes in this. Uh, okay, okay. Um, so yeah, I'm editing and uh, just wanted to say... Normally, I'm the one who objects to the putting of individual pieces of fan art uh, because that's usually unfair unless there's like a special reason to. But you know what? Fine. Just this once, one time, 
I will edit in this piece of fan art because apparently they loved it and it is kind of funny and it's got a lot of references and stuff, I guess. But this is a one-time thing. We are not putting in individual pieces of fan art into this episode, okay? So just this once, I'm going to make the exception. So enjoy and know that I'm also listening through this the first time while I'm editing. So this should be fun. <laughs> oh my yes. Goodness. I tried to skip it so uh, hard. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I tried so hard to skip I that. I backpedaled so much. Don't uh, skip on the pizza sauce burn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, I I can't lie. It's pretty great. That's like, pretty awesome. Mysterious Chaos kind of outdid himself there. That's it's a pretty great piece. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, whether I like it or not, it's fan art of my OC, regardless of the mustache. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, your expression. All right. Yes. Uh, so... Um, without further ado, or kind of getting off onto other tangents, we'll jump right into the theme, which, uh, for this episode is traditional painting. Um, and we kind of took that term a little loosely. We're doing painting plus watercolors. Um, so yeah. Watercolor is a form of painting. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, it's not so. just with water colors. It, it is traditional. Hey. Um. Get on with it. Yes, get on. So we'll start off with a piece called Canterlot Night by Trigion. And Trigion. Yeah. Something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an yeah. oil painting, uh, oil on canvas, and it depicts Canterlot at night. Um, and Burned, I know you've done quite a lot of oil painting in the past. And by quite a lot. If by quite a lot. <laughs> I mean, mean what, two? two pieces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've done two oil paintings, um, two pony related oil paintings. Mm -hmm. And then I've done a lot of paintings for class, which means I've done a lot of horrible, horrible paintings that I've never <laughs> seen, um, which are over there in the corner of my room because they're terrible. Oh. Um, because they're from when I was learning. But the two decent oil paintings that I actually did are on my DeviantArt. Um, Self plug, cough. <laughs> I'm seeing those. Put those on the screen, Plasma. <laughs> Dang it. No, make Graham Plaza put them on the screen for us. Uh, so those are the two oil paintings that I did. But, but yeah, enough about me. Back to uh, back to Trigion. Yeah. Um. This is like he or he's like the original p acrylic pony painter. Yes. Like I think he has some paintings in here back from like 2011. He has so but, many. <laughs> like, back when I like first became a pony, and like there was pony a pony art that I was venturing into. Like if. I could think of an acrylic painting like it would go back to Trigion like it was his paintings that I would think of especially his like six what is it the Elements of Harmony yes. series where he did like the six panels mm -hmm. um, and like that's real iconic for like if we're talking about iconic acrylic brony art or paint or <laughs> just brony paintings in general he does does he do acrylic paintings or oil paintings they're oil I don't oil paintings right. oil paintings yeah yeah that's right because he really enjoys the messy medium yeah I believe he said in one of his journal, one of his descriptions, he really, really enjoys, um, like, having to work with something that's really, like, oily and, um, like, tangible, and you can feel it, work with it, mm -hmm. and you know, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Well... Because it physically sticks up from the canvas, you know? Yeah, like, if you look at one of his other pieces, which is called Schoolhouse, um, like, you can physically see the brush strokes and, and see the paint basically glopped onto the canvas, um, and it kind of gives it... A feeling of depth per stroke kind of thing Ooh. um yeah <laughs> a lot of oil, 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 oil a lot of oil painters will really do that is the really glob paint onto the canvas because oil paint you can really like stack on stack on top of each other mm -hmm. stack on top of each other if you kind of let it dry a little bit and then keep adding colors mm -hmm. acrylic you more it's more about thinner layers and kind of having a thinner painting i suppose you could really glob on acrylic painting when it does dry faster yeah i don't know is it but is it just to to add texture to the painting and, and kind of give it some depth or is there um um yes mm -hmm. uh when when an artist kind of like globs on painting it's it it kind of gives it depth and it kind of gives it a little bit of style and it kind of it makes the paint so it's physically more visible mm -hmm. and it, kind of how it's physically globbed on like we've mentioned mm -hmm. um becomes something that you can see visually because the painting is no longer flat it's no longer like a picture plane yeah it actually does stick up it actually creates a rough surface and creates some kind of dynamic hmm. so there's a lot of um like famous painters and stuff who will like physically glob on paint so much that it will like stick a couple inches up above the canvas yeah and give it this actual like three-dimensionality 
that you wouldn't be able to get with like a normal medium or something like digital you know what i mean mm -hmm. and it also i mean it kind of sticks with that whole messy medium kind of thing um uh, yeah, like even more so i guess uh if you if you do glob on the paint because it kind of forces you to do that because when you glob on the paint yeah. i guess you, you can't really have too fine of a brush stroke mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah it's easier to make thinner layers with acrylic i do believe mm -hmm. um, because it's plastic based so you use water to thin it so okay. you can kind of make um, using layers you can kind of make very very thin pieces and you can still make thin paintings with oil um, but oil tends to have colors bleed through each other a little bit more, I believe. Mm -hmm. But that might be the strength of pigment. I'm like, I'm not a professional painter by any means. <laughs> um, so, like, I technically don't know this. We should have someone on to help us, like Cosmic Unicorn knows what she's talking about. We totally should. <laughs> <laughs> you, mean, you mean again? <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So, but, yeah, like I was saying earlier, um, how, how you physically, like, put a lot of paint on the canvas Um Trigion really enjoys doing that. He really enjoys having that really thick, globby paint, and it gives things an extra sense of depth and dynamic that you wouldn't normally be able to get with most mediums, and that showing your physical brush strokes and the way that the painting goes, and the paint is placed in, and, and everything, and you can see its direction, and kind of like the edges of the paint, you know, when you put put it on, put your brush on there. So mm -hmm. let's see what the example we're looking at is, um, bring it up. Uh, Canterlot Knight. If you yeah. look kind of at the castle on the bottom right, I make this bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Why even bother with Where fancy are? paints and paintbrushes? Just use poster paint and fingers. Finger painting. <laughs> I would love to see some some pony finger paint stuff. I would also love to see. <laughs> paint paint. Burn, I love Burn would paint. have a. Yeah. I've seen some really really amazing finger paint by like professional artists, yeah. but pony finger painting. Um, I'd have to ask my niece for that. <laughs> well, <laughs> do it and get it to make something. Can we have her on the show then? <laughs> oh, maybe. We can ask her to be pony and then ask her to make us some fan art. Okay, no. uh, okay so a better example I'm actually going to bring up yeah. is the uh, the schoolhouse one that you brought mm -hmm. up. If you actually look at the um, stuff like the roof. Yeah. And, and the trees uh, too. I guess kind of the walkway. Um, even yeah. the trees in the sky. You'll notice that those little like dabs of paint they all have direction given to them and you can kind of see the edges of the paint where like paint overlaps and it kind of creates this flow and movement in fact the sky i'm pretty sure he was using um what is it uh god sorry nice by yeah um oh i forget who it is god what is this, this is the artist everyone's supposed to know um um <laughs> Picasso, hey, no. Van Gogh, yeah, Van Gogh. Thank yep. you. Yep, <laughs> we're an art artist. show. We started. Out. <laughs> yeah, things are supposed to know. Um, yeah. I haven't really gotten to that point in art history. We only touched on it in art appreciation. <laughs> but anyways, yes, yeah, Starry Night by Van Gogh. Um, I think he kind of used that as uh, some inspiration in the background there, using those blues and yellows, and then the swirly bits of clouds. Yeah, but I mean that's real like iconic. You know, mm -hmm. acrylic painting mm -hmm. is. Physically being able to see your brush strokes and flow in the movement because um, paint in general is very good at picking up, you know, flow in the hand. And it's like, it's one of those mediums where it's sometimes it comes more about the artist and his physical putting the paint on that canvas because showing those brush strokes is another way to say, like, I made this. Like, yeah, this is made like by me by hand. Um, it's a way of like the artist saying like he was there, you know. Mm hmm. Yeah, and it gives them their own style and uh, pre like a, a presence in the art, I think, is probably mm -hmm. a good way to put it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, exactly. if, if we go back to this Canterlot Knight piece, uh, you can definitely see the brushstrokes like in the, the lower right-hand corner of the castle. It's not as prominent as in Schoolhouse, but um, you can still see that there and also in some of the rocks in the foreground. Um, with the, the sky, it's it's not really as prevalent, but... Um, you know, the, the whole castle messy medium kind of thing. You can definitely see where his strokes are and the direction of the strokes. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Like, I really... In, nah, from, from, okay, no, 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 go on. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Um, I really enjoy how he did the sky because uh, uh -huh. it, it's kind of cool to look at how he built it yeah. so like it looks like he started with you know like a pure black and then he started putting yeah 
uh, paint on somehow. Um, obviously, he wasn't globbing the paint on for this guy. Yeah. He was putting it on in some other fashion. And then he actually, like, spackled paint on by which I assume he, like, got a brush and, like, hit it against his hand and, like, spackled different colored paint onto the sky. Mm-hmm. And he has oranges and whites and blues. And it ended up turning out really cool and some reds and, like, violets in the background underneath. Yeah. And it ended up making, like, a really cool feeling. Pretty sure he really put cool the white paint in his mouth and sneezed. <laughs> I am an artist. <laughs> yes. It's so oh, there, there, there is some uh, highly unconventional methods of creating art out there, like that one, like like that one guy that pees on his painting to make art. Like that's just weird. I didn't know that, but thank you for educating me. <laughs> uh, I've seen that it's one. always nice to stay artistically educated. <laughs> Anyhow, anyway, uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it would be really cool to see like a. Uh, how he made the sky um because it it doesn't really scream traditional oil painting it like but you know it'd be interesting to see his whole process yeah, yeah. all right so uh on to our next piece nope not done yet no <laughs> all right go go ahead no. yeah <laughs> <laughs> um my last little point was um i was gonna mention the mountains the sky and the castle kind of create a interesting dynamic where you have the black mountains, the sky with color, and then the castle is actually like one of the brightest parts with like some really bright things of white in there. Mm-hmm. I would have liked to see the castle maybe been a bit more dim or desaturated in places like that one white pillar or the entrance, how it's that really like bright blue mm-hmm. to just kind of have it recede into the background a little bit more because it really pops out. But um, the black mountains in the bottom, like even though that's like super super black and i'm sure if we were to see it in person it would actually be like a deep violet or something yeah um would it they they again like kind of come forward and create a bit more um depth even though they're like pure black um because darker things tend to come forward in our view um we've made that example on the show where if you hold your hand in front of you like your monitor a bright light your hand's darker than the light so it'll like be more forward um and then he kind of plays a little bit with atmospheric perspective, lightening the mountains in the background. Mm-hmm. So, and then having the castle be the brightest point, like you can still tell like castle clo- closest, then mountains, then sky. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's, it's kind of done well. And it's cool. That was the last kind of point I just wanted to point out and like make people aware of, you know. Yeah. Got to try to stay educational. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's good for bringing your focus to the castle too, because that, that's kind of the main focal point of the piece. Exactly. So, yeah. Kind of makes it stand okay, out. Now I'm done. Okay. <laughs> I have no more points. All right. So our next piece is called MLP Morning and Evening Ponies by Blixit. Uh, this is a watercolor piece. And yes. it is adorable. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. It's it's really interesting um, like to contrast with the oil painting um, because, I, I don't know, I personally haven't done watercolors in many, many years. Um but I know it's it's a bit harder to control the um, the ink, or is it called ink? Paint. Like, uh, paint. Just paint. paint. It's paint. Yeah. Uh, in in watercolor, you'd say control the watercolor, or control yeah. the water, because it's it's very it's very very watery. It's basically water that carries pigment. That's mm-hmm. why it's called watercolor. Yeah. Because uh, watercolor painters they'll use water and then they'll (laughs) use um the paints and they'll put a little bit of water in the paint and then get their paintbrush loaded up with water and some pigment and then they'll paint on watercolor paper which is a special kind of paper that we kind of mentioned in our jai interview um last week um that's very very thick and it absorbs water well and it's very rough so the water sticks to it so it has um a lot of surface tension so water wants to bind to it wants to stick to it and the paper will hold the pigment well Mm -hmm. hold the color well hold the water well and you can get different kinds of paper, so water flows differently to give you different kinds of styles, so on, yeah. whatever. But, yeah, you could just say, like, um, holds the water, holds the paint. Is can you just yeah. define what, what, what watercolor is? Because I've got – there's, there's the different um, kinds of watercolor stuff. Like, I've got watercolor pencils and crayons, and there's watercolor paints, and there's all sorts of different stuff. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, watercolor painting kind of just applies generally in that – you're using water and pigment on paper. Um, watercolor pencils are basically a kind of pigment that's bound in maybe not a wax because wax repels um, water, mm-hmm. but some kind of substance that binds pigment in the pencil. So you can mm-hmm. draw um, with your pencil on paper 
and then you physically put water on top of what you yep. just drew with the pencil yep, to create kind of a uh, watercolor cool. pencil drawing. Yeah, that's what I've got. So that way you're skipping. That's hmm? that's what I've got. Oh, no, that's yeah. what you've got. Okay. Yeah. That way you're skipping like just directly putting water into um the paint and then putting it on the canvas that way or the paper that way. You're physically putting the pigment on first with the pencil, then putting the water on. Mm-hmm. So you're kind of like skipping a step there. And then you have a little bit more control with the pencil, so you kind of be a little bit more exact. And then um, you put the water on top of it, giving it a completely different feel than as if you were to put water on water, because then you're putting water on pigment. Yeah. Um, and then watercolor crayons, it's the same thing. They're not crayons by definition because they don't use wax. They use some other kind of medium to hold them together. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're putting pigment on first and putting water on top of it Yeah. I, rather than brushing it on. I can imagine that with the the pencils or the the quote unquote crayons it's a lot easier to control um kind mm-hmm. of the flow rather than using a paintbrush to put the pigment on the paper cuz with watercolor pencils and crayons like you're it's more of a drawing than as a painting because you're drawing the pigment on mm-hmm. but then once you put the water on you're using a paintbrush on the water and that's when you're physically like painting um with a brush um, and like mixing colors, cut colors, like controlling water flow and um, like making the colors flow together. Because like um, with pigments and drawings and crayons and pencils, they'll the pigments are separated. They're very hard to like blend together unless you like you know scribbly yeah. scribble <laughs> them on and like push the colors together. Better. But mm-hmm. with watercolors, you can take that water and then you can take it and you can physically mix the colors together. Yeah. Um, and you have um, control that way, which gives you some really cool effects, like in Rainbow Dash's mane and tail in this piece, and also in Twilight's uh, mane and tail. Yes, uh, where you see those colors blend. Yeah, where all the colors are blending in, and the colors mm-hmm. also fade out towards the edges um, into the white. Um, burnt. Yeah, kind of like they bleed into the paper. Yeah. Um, What's up? In terms of like the the background, like the water that they're standing in, um, mm-hmm. it's it seems like uh the blending of that bluish color um mm-hmm. is a little lighter how is that because there's more water and it's more spread out uh yes like... there's more water and there's less pigment mm-hmm. and like jayu was saying is that if you're quick you can use something like a rag or a paper towel to dry paint off so watercolor painting is very cool and unique in that it's not about using pigment in oil and then putting it on um a and like putting it on us on your canvas it's more about how much water and how much pigment you put on the canvas and how much you take off and watercolor painting is also very unique in that it's really a lot about negative space um in that what you don't paint becomes extremely important with watercolor painting um one because it's hard not to paint on some places and then two because since it becomes so vivid that that negative space becomes an area that creates extreme detail with watercolor as a medium because since how how do I describe this since water is so sometimes hard to control and goes on the canvas um so much and blends into other colors and blends into the paper that when you have specific areas that are very sharp or don't have paint on them it creates a lot of interest and it's something very commonly used in water watercolor painting um, there's a lot of pieces you can see. This one, the piece is by Jai. Um, there's actually a piece that um, I actually will feature really quick just to make the counterpoint to this. Okay. <laughs> but it's by Gizbing on DeviantArt called a Voodoo Brew. And that piece is actually pretty unique because it doesn't really use negative space. Um, everything is painted. Everything is wa- like it's done in watercolor again, but it's all painted in. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of colors on it that are like pigments painted over pigments and blended into other pigments and water blended into water. Um, and like the most use of negative space is probably like Twilight's eye or um, Zakora's eye. Yeah. But it's like it's the kind of the opposite use of negative space than in the piece right now we're looking at, which is uh, the morning and evening ponies by. Blix, mm-hmm. Blix it. I could imagine that that trying to get that separation between two different colors to be fairly sharp um, is probably pretty difficult because you don't want the colors to blend in together. Um, yeah, exactly. So yeah, I could see where like that negative space would come in handy because you don't you you only have to worry about kind of cutting one color off sharply rather than um, mm-hmm. cutting two off. Um, yeah, actually, exactly like that 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 point of like how colors mix and colors cutting from other colors and then sharp edges or 
soft edges, <clears throat> like how much water you use and how much pigment you use, so on and so forth. That's basically what creates the interestingness and the dynamic of the painting, especially in this watercolor painting. And it's something that watercolor artists really enjoy because it's so easy to do with watercolor as a medium. Um, and Blixit is an awesome watercolor artist. That's kind of, that's one of the main things she does artistically. She has a lot of really cool watercolor pieces in her gallery that are mainly like Pokemon themed. She has some really cool Eevee pieces um, that I actually, I actually bought a little Eevee piece by her um, at Emerald City Comic Con, the first convention I went to. Um, that's where I originally saw her art. Um, <clears throat> but she's really good in it. And she's really skilled in it and she knows her medium and she knows what she's doing. And looking at this piece in particular, there's a lot of things in it that make it a quote unquote really, really good um, watercolor piece. In that, what I was saying earlier, how colors will um, be sharp on edges and soft on edges, and how colors blend. So, just like how you were mentioning how the colors blend into each other. So, like in Rainbow Dash's main, how you have all those colors and they really flow together because there was a lot of water used there and a lot of the colors physically blended in together. Because with watercolor, what you can do is if you lay down a color and then lay down a color next to it or another color and you let them dry or whatever and it they are sharp edged if you don't like that you can go back over it with water and the water will reenact the 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 color and the pigment and it will bring it back out again it will blend together so you can turn something that was a sharp edge and turn it into a soft one yeah now that being said if you have a sharp edge that has to go on last everything that is a soft edge has to go on first because you can't go back over it with water because it will make things underneath it soft mm -hmm. So with stuff like Rainbow Dash's mane and then the water underneath underneath Rainbow Dash, Rainbow Dash, that was used to like a really high amount of water and then it was really soft and she yeah. probably like um, didn't use a lot of pigment or um, so it was higher water than pigment ratio or whatever mm -hmm. and then used paper to, paper towel to dry and whatnot. Um, it seems like... And then on Aereo's... Oh, go ahead. Uh, I, I was just going to say it seems like with watercolors, um, more so I guess than oil paintings, you can really use layering um, to get kind of a different blending effect like in Rainbow Dash's yes. main. Um, so you have to be careful with that layering. Yeah. Because uh, colors will start to bleed if you use the right, wrong kind of water or whatever. Mm -hmm. So in spots like the hair strands or the um, of both Twilight and Rainbow Dash's main and then like the dragonflies, that was used a high amount of pigment, pigment and a low amount of water so the water didn't bleed into the paper. Um, it just went on and the color went there and it didn't spread. So, again, going back to a point I was making earlier of sharp edges and soft edges, um, the reason why this piece is so unique and interesting and done so well is that it has a really great use of hard edges on stuff like um, Rainbow Dash and Twilight and certain details in the water and in the flowers and in their hair, and then also includes soft edges like in um, Rainbow Dash's hair and the above and then the water and then how Twilight's mane kind of flows into everything and how that all plays, um, and especially, again, with the point I made about negative space with her wings, which is super cool to me, how she didn't paint in spots on the wings, and then it made those pop and physically become part of Rainbow Dash and part of the painting, but yet they're not painted, um, and that's using the negative space to, like, its absolute full potential, which is super important in a lot of watercolor pieces. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, I wonder, is it possible to, like, mask things uh, in watercolors yes yeah. um you can mask certain things with wax mm -hmm. um so i'm assuming that she may have done that in places like the uh, details in the water and like the ripples yeah so you can put wax on your paper using like a wax pencil or crayon or whatever huh. um pencil is probably more exact yeah and like make areas where the water and pigment won't go on it yeah or um how i was mentioning earlier is how you can put a pigment on and then let it dry mm -hmm. Um, I'm assuming that's what she did for areas like the water on the bottom left. She probably painted on there, let it dry really thoroughly, and then went back over it with water and then dabbed it real quick mm -hmm. to get kind of that blue over the detail. Yeah. So it didn't start bleeding everything together and creating that water bleeding into the paper feel like in the bottom part of Rainbow Dash's mane all the way across the piece. Hmm. Cool. Because the, all the way across the piece, she put water on there and then let it sit and it really soaked into the paper and that like rough edge to the bottom of her mane mm -hmm. is the pigment blending or soaking into the fibers of the paper is what's creating that um, kind of effect and dynamic is the 
the physical fiber to the watercolor paper is what you're seeing. Yeah. Huh. That's really cool. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Love it. Yeah. All right. Uh, unfortunately, we do have to move on um, to... <laughs> uh, Stop playing Rainbow Pass with John. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just want to talk about art all day. No, 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 no. I know you do. Uh, this is a piece called Commission Good Boy by Sophie Cabra. Um, Sophie Cabra. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's awesome. Yeah. Um, Vern, do you want to talk a bit about this piece first? I do. Go. Um, this piece is acrylic. So we featured oil, then watercolor, and now we're back to and now we're to acrylic. Good. Um, which is our third little painting style of this episode in like the popular ways to paint. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, it would be really cool to see a pony fresco off topic. That would be so whatever. cool. Um, <laughs> so, uh, or maybe spray paint. Any, uh, any anyway. Italian bronies do it. <laughs> so, Sophie Cabra is an acrylic painter. And he does digital art as well as traditional, but he really enjoys doing traditional art pieces like this. And as of recent, he's been doing a lot of pony square acrylic paintings, and he's actually been selling them on Etsy, which I found out about a little too late, so I couldn't snag uh, one of some of my favorites, unfortunately. Uh, but oh well, there will probably be more paint to snag in the future paintings. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> again, he's a really awesome acrylic painter, um, and you can kind of see the difference in painting with acrylic through painting with oil in in his style and how he paints yeah um so now it's pos a kind of a point on paintings like acrylic to um acrylic to oil um every paint kind of acts a little differently um and the big differences are that oil painting takes forever to dry mm -hmm. but the colors and the pigments will will always have a certain oily feel oily look and how they go on the canvas how they go on the brush and the mediums you use to mix with that and by medium i don't mean like artistic medium what it's used medium also means things that you mix in with your paint to make it do certain things mm -hmm. so you can mix in different oils with oil paintings um to oil paints okay. to make them act different ways dry quicker dry slower so on and so forth um and Acrylic painting acts differently than oil painting because it's using acrylics, it's using plastic, and you mix it with water, not certain mediums. You can mix it with mm. kind of mediums, but normally um, you use water. You can't use water in oil paintings, obviously, yeah. water and oil don't mix, <laughs> and it looks awful from what I've heard. Yeah, um, I can imagine. <laughs> so anyway, so acrylic dries quickly, and it is, um, and and it's used, it's uses plastic and water. Hmm. So with that concept. It's possible to make acrylic and oil look similar, but most of the time they're very different and that oil painting um, will usually be a uh, goopier and more messy medium mm -hmm. um, and then acrylic will be more softer, more painted, more shaded, yeah. shade, like with more shading. Um, I suppose they're both painted. It's a bad <laughs> adjective. Um, uh, but yeah, no. I, yeah. And then, yeah, totally get what you're saying <laughs> uh, to kind of finish that point yeah, go ahead. uh with oil painting you can get some very smooth colors when you use certain mediums um an artist i'm a big fan of margaret wall roma who had completely off topic and no one will ever see her unless you actually <laughs> google her name margaret wall roma um had a gallery at my college and she had very very smooth colors but artists like that will put in a lot and a lot of work to make oil color oil painting seem smooth like acrylic painting and it's a lot of medium and a lot of pain and toil to make it flat but anyway relevant back <laughs> to this piece um so it's using acrylics and it's very shaded so since acrylics dry quicker than oil most of the time with the majority of artists it will create that different feel because they can make the painting quicker and they can shade it mm -hmm. um quicker and then paint usually doesn't mix into other paint as often so since oil is always wet um, a lot of the time when artists will paint on stuff, oil will constantly be mixing in together with other oil paintings. And it's a lot about mixing together that paint with acrylic. You let a color dry and then you paint over it with a similar color. And then you create creating those layers of paint rather than mixing wet paint in with wet paint. It's about letting the, putting the paint down and letting it dry. So huh. with Soapy Cobra in this piece, it's a great example because in places like discord and 
um even uh discord did um big, big mac, mac yeah. <laughs> you can you can see how there's lighter colors of shading on certain parts mm -hmm. and then darker colors of shading below it um it probably would not look the same if it was oil mm -hmm. anyway um real cool acrylic piece yeah his really thick outlines something like that would be very difficult to do with oil painting but since it's acrylic it dries quicker it's a little easier to maneuver sometimes he can draw like the characters the figures the shading first um really get those sense that sense of color and shading and like kind of dynamicness and light to dark mm -hmm. and then go back over it with that um uh, with the stroke you know to give it that my little pony feel yeah yeah it's it's really Blech. neat that um using acrylic you can do something like this where it's it's fairly show accurate because of the thick outlines um but you know it's it's painted traditional style um and just kind of comparing this to our first piece uh which was oil you can definitely see right off the bat that there's you know a bit more detail in this piece and you have the the sharper lines instead of the goopy oil paint on it mm -hmm. That has a lot to do with the artist's preference and the artist's style and a little less to do with what kind of paints are used, but it's definitely with each of these artists, they enjoy the quality of the paint in which they've chosen from acrylic to oil, and it's very transparent in the piece that they've painted. So that's a, like, that's exactly, that's a great point because in our first piece, that artist really enjoys messy painting, really enjoys the messy medium, enjoys that goopy paint, so he paints in oil. To whereas Sophie Cabra really likes the, that fine detail, outlining his paintings, getting that more sense of soft shading, because there's a much more like enhanced sense of soft shading gradients of color, and like in Discord's neck, where it kind of has like that bluish and um, tint that kind of matches that's kind of part of the background and the front of his neck, and then goes darker towards the back of his neck, or in his lion hand. Um, how it's like real gold on his shoulder and then goes into darker brown on his on his uh, elbow. Um, stuff like that is much easier to create using an acrylic medium rather than something that's really goopy um, like oil. So now with, with that kind of shading, um, would basically there be many, many strokes of different colors to make that? Or would, it, would there be some kind of blending involved in uh, an acrylic piece? Because I, I think in, a, in an oil piece, obviously, to create some shading, you would um, blend together colors, I think. Yeah. Um, with with oil, um, you would have, like, a traditional way to do it is you would have two, two paintbrushes, and you would have, like, two colors, and you would make them kind of similar. And then you would constantly use two different colors to go in between light and dark. Um, uh, so how we learned it in class was we had um, white and then we had black and then we would make some shades of gray. And then to make like a sphere or something, we would have two paintbrushes and we would start with the lighter and then start to go darker. And then we would kind of mix them to mix them together. Um, and as we used our two paintbrushes, eventually the paint, the paint on the paintbrush would become more gray and we'd eventually get that tone on, on the in-between. So with oil, you're constantly painting while the paint is wet. It's all mainly oil painting is all about painting with while the oil is still while the paint is still wet. Because oil paint takes forever to dry. That's the point. You're painting in wet painting. It's all about painting in wet. But with acrylic, you want you want it to dry. So it's about painting on dry. So you can mix an acrylic, but you have to do it very quick. And it's harder. Um, and you have to use a medium to make it last longer. So normally, acrylic is more about adding a layer and then adding um, a, like a darker color layer over that or vice versa. Um, rather than mixing wet into wet like you would in oil. Okay. Would you, like, to, to get those different shades, would you mix it beforehand, before painting on the medium, or? Um... It's, I believe it's usually always a good habit, especially with any kind of paint, to always mix your paint beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, with acrylic, it's a bit harder because it dries quicker, so you have to use something to keep your paint from drying on, like, your easel or something. Mm -hmm. um, or not, is easel the wrong word? Yeah, it's, um. um whatever you hold your paint palette? on. Palette? Maybe. Palette, yeah. thank yep. you. <laughs> yeah. You have to use some kind of medium to keep your palette from drying up. Okay. Um, and oil is some that uh, you just you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Because, like, it, never, <laughs> it never dries. Like I've in our class, you'll like start a painting the next day and have some stuff on your palette and just leave your palette there. And then the next day you come back and you can still paint 
with that paint that's been sitting there all day. Yeah. But with acrylic, no, nah, nope, it's the hard piece of plastic. <laughs> yeah, and uh, no, no hope of returning to <laughs> at that point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, in this piece, you can definitely see that it's it's still a painted medium. Um, if you look at like, for instance, Discord's neck, um, or his his arm, you can still see brush strokes. Um, mm-hmm. which it's, it's also interesting because it's, it's kind of in between an oil painting in my, in my opinion, it's, it's in, somewhere in between mm-hmm. an oil painting and like a, a digital type painting. Um, although I guess that's not really easy to, <laughs> to compare because digital paintings can emulate any style, I guess, or any medium. Yeah. I mean, but... you're, you're talking about the technique and use in which you use to build them mm-hmm. or make them or create them. Yeah. So like with this when i look at it it kind of speaks digital to me, digital to me one mainly because my little pony is a digital mm-hmm. um like art so to speak yeah. like my little pony as a style is digital so the thick outlines on these characters is very cartoon like mm-hmm. and how there's colors given to the outlines is also again like reminiscent of the my little pony show style yeah. which kind of speaks a little bit digital to me um, but digital painting a lot online has to do with, you know, mixing colors together, like gradients of colors, because it's very easy to like when you use a soft edged brush to have those colors blend. Mm-hmm. So like the stuff on this, how it does blend in a lot of areas and then has that very sharp color to the edge of mm-hmm. it kind of does look a little digital to me. Like I could see where you would get that. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. we do have to move on. Uh, unless you have something else to say about this piece um other than pointing out big obvious things like atmospheric perspective yeah <laughs> um, if you know what that is we say it all the time in our show yep. um and then the out the background doesn't use outlines yet the characters do my little pony style mm-hmm. cool stuff he just makes really good artistic choices and like the lighting with paint in this is done really cool really well and so he covers a really good acrylic painter. You should go check out his work. Yeah, definitely go check out his work. Actually, go check out all the artists <laughs> in uh, in this episode and all our episodes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right, so <laughs> <laughs> our last piece for today uh, is called Sunrise in Equestria by Cosmic Unicorn, who actually just posted this piece um, a couple of days ago, a few days ago. Um, June 10th. Yep. Uh, Four days ago. This is an oil painting and Mm -hmm. it is phenomenal (laughs) uh holy junk yeah just the level of detail and everything oh my god (laughs) um yes yeah Uh, so yes uh as far as well before i say junk pinky dash you're still here what do you think about this piece i like it it's um well it's it's a landscape it's, it's a fairly simple sort of idea it's just a landscape but the amount of detail that she's got in the front of it here with those trees and all, all the berries and the flowers and stuff down the bottom and e- even the trees mm-hmm. themselves are all really really detailed mm-hmm. and you, then you've got the back that you've got cantaloupe hanging off the side of a mountain I think it's cantaloupe it looks like cantaloupe hanging off the hanging yep. off the side of a mountain there of course it is it's got to be mm-hmm. um, <laughs> yep Ponies, oh, this, right? <laughs> yep, and, yep. Yeah, and um, so, and then you got the clouds there, which all look light and fluffy, even though they're made of oil painting, which is personally I quite like. Mm-hmm. Um, all, all the fluffy clouds, the clouds they're made from the sort of not so fluffy medium. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, overall I, I quite like it. Yeah, yeah, I feel bad, Pinky Dash, because uh, y- you know, we're, we've been talking so much, but that's it. I can't uh, talk <laughs> too much. Oh. Uh, Oh, I hope you feel better. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's actually really cool because Cosmic Unicorn did uh, kind of a work in progress um, of this piece. And you, it, you can kind of see up close uh, kind of the graininess of the oil painting on the, uh, I think this is on a panel. Yeah. Um, which is really cool. On panel rather than canvas. Yeah. It, g- it gives you a interesting look at like what the actual yeah. oil okay. oil looks like yeah um yeah her close-ups are really cool 
I mean, something that, that is really, really well done in this piece uh, is something that we talk about a lot, which is atmospheric perspective. Um, you get this fog from the mountains and, uh, I mean, you have focal points like Canterlot and the top of the mountain and you have the the foreground with the trees and stuff. And as you move towards the background, um, towards like the, the middle of the piece, you get this, this kind of foggy atmospheric perspective, which kind of... Uh, you know, fades out the piece a little bit, gives it less detail in there. Gives it depth. Yeah. And value. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, a visually similar illusion to what we could see in real life as depth. Mm-hmm. An art, a well-created artistic illusion. Yes. Because it's an illusion of depth. There's not actually depth there. It's just a panel that we can like pet and touch <laughs> but it's giving the illusion that through this window which is a flat piece of wood mm-hmm. has depth to it yeah art stuff it's cool yeah it is but yes um as far as oil like pony oil painters go i think in my personal opinion cosmic unicorn is probably one of the most skilled and awesome oil painters who happens to be a Baroni. Now, that's a huge <laughs> statement, but I on DeviantArt specifically, in what I follow, I haven't seen an oil painter who has who can create something as beautiful as what Cosmic Unicorn has created here. That being said, this is a master study. Mm-hmm. Um, this painting, the original of this painting, was done by someone named um, Albert... Uh, I believe in German that'd be Bierstratz, Albert Bierstratz piece called Sunrise on the Matterhorn. Um, and he was uh, a landscape painter master, um, hence why it's like master study. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was one of like the most famous painters for painting like landscapes in general. And she got to see this painting in person, um, which is what really inspired her to make this piece. She made most of it and I believe it was unfinished. And then when she went to go see the piece in person in a new york in new york in a gallery um she lives here in the pacific northwest and she went to new york to, to like and saw this piece in a gallery um it inspired her to finish this piece and she decided to add her own touch which was adding canterlot there on the top mm-hmm. and this piece is actually going up for auction at everfree north everfree northwest charity auction and i'm pained to say that because i don't want people to know about that <laughs> because i'm gonna be there but and you totally want to buy this <laughs> um, i i very much do yeah. um i'm in love with this painting it's very cool but i'm a huge fan of cosmic Unicorn anyway yes mm-hmm. has been apparent on the show <laughs> um but oh my goodness like everything you mentioned value depth perspective atmospheric perspective like all the stuff is there I mean, the master painter obviously had a huge understanding of that, and Cosmic Unicorn has recre- recreated that in oil painting wonderfully. I mean, I'm looking at the original, and I can't even, like, I can barely tell the difference in between her painting and the original. Like, the original has a lot more super, super small details in the trees and in the clouds. In fact, like, in Cosmic Unicorn's piece, it looks like she just kind of blurred it a little bit. Like, her piece is just, like, slightly blurred in comparison to the original. But I also assume that the original is very large in comparison. The original is 58 by 42 inches to where Cosmic Unicorns is 16 by 20. So, Cosmic Unicorns is, like, um, a little over 2 feet by 3 feet um, to where the other one is, like, almost five feet yeah by six feet <laughs> gives you a little bit more um, breathing room if you're working into yeah that big. to make that extreme small finite detail in oil of all things um to where cosmic unicorn is working on a smaller panel but even when like limited to that and then limited to being an art student managed to create something that i think is beautiful and as far as color goes is a very close representation of the original uh the foreground uh, looks a little bit darker in the original, kind of again creating that things that you know things that are darker and in, in front of you are closer, and things that are lighter are farther away. Um, but still, like absolutely beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And eh, man, just oil <laughs> painting, dude. I know oil. it's it's so mind blowing because I I personally think that that oil is a very difficult medium to master. 
um, just because, like you were saying, I would agree. It, yeah. it dries so slowly, and you have to be very careful when mixing things. Um, and to be able to do something like this is just fantastic. And it's like this is done traditionally too. So to get this traditional painting onto us, where we can see it on our monitors, to make it now it's digital, the colors and the feeling of the painting just isn't there because it's harder to see the brush strokes. It's harder to see the the painters like physical pre like presence when putting that paint on the board and the colors will never be true um without extreme amounts of work because it will always be considered to that camera so like in her work in progress picture the colors are so much brighter and vivid on the one picture um in the top left in comparison to the huge picture on here on her deviant art where it looks a bit more desaturated in comparison to when it was placed in the white light on her um on our work in progress. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's going to be real awesome to see this piece in person. And um, yeah, go to Everfree Northwest. Uh, when we physically go to <laughs> Everfree Northwest. Yeah. And it's weird because my, my art history teacher will always say like, go see um, like art in person, you know, because it's so much like more awesome. And, you know, I never really held that appreciation for like art because I'm never like, oh, I really want to go to this art gallery and see this art. <laughs> but it's like, now that I have this silly passion about ponies built up so much that I see this piece digitally and I'm like, I really want to see this in person so bad that I feel this kind of silly in my little bro. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm right there with you. Like, I, I mean, even just looking at this on the computer monitor, um, it looks fantastic. And I can't imagine, you know, what it looks like in real life. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward <laughs> yeah. to seeing it as well. So yeah so all of the artistic things we've ever mentioned on the show summed up into this piece yep <laughs> color value perspective stuff ponies you name ponies, it yeah i don't even have like <clears throat> intelligent stuff to say about this piece it's just there just look we'll at just it. go with ponies yep kind yep. of castle done really well look at that yep <laughs> uh like oh my goodness uh yeah anyway anyhow uh so that is all of the art for today um Pinky Dash, are you up to doing questions or? Mm, well, you should ask. Right. You can have a go. Okay. Um, all right. So we have some questions. Uh, first question is: I love creating digital arts with high resolution, and I've got good feedback and improved my technique in my every piece. But I've got serious problems with speed. I'm extremely slow compared to everyone. Anyone else? How do you think I should improve my speed in drawing? Sent in by Discord. Um, I guess I can start with saying, uh, 30 minute challenge. <laughs> um, <laughs> 30 minute challenge. yeah, we had a trail on, on two weeks challenge. ago, 30 second challenge. Yeah. <laughs> um, we had a trail on two weeks ago and, and we talked a little bit about the 30 minute challenge. Um, really it, as with anything, you know, it's, it's all about practice and, and with practice you get better and that includes, you know, drawing faster. So if you if you take time to to draw every little detail and and stuff, uh, you're gonna make fantastic art, but it's gonna take a while, um, forever. But yeah, if you if you limit yourself, um, and you you basically say, okay, this piece I'm gonna do really quickly, but I'm not gonna maybe put as much detail into it, um, and then you can work your way up from there. You set set a time limit, and and participate in these these thirty minute challenges because they really give you some motivation to to do things quickly. Mm -hmm. I'll also mention yeah. over on um, if if you're lacking mm -hmm. if you're lacking on what on ideas to draw over on the uh, MLP Drawing School subreddit, they do weekly or biweekly challenges. If you have a look at those, I think one of them was draw something as quick as you can as well. Now I think about it, but mm -hmm. uh, if, if if you're lacking on on an idea, have a look at those, get an idea, and then just draw as fast as you can. Even even if it looks terrible, just keep doing it. It'll get better. Yeah. Yep. That's so. Just like yeah. Go on. No, go go on. Okay. No. Yeah. Just like Flutter guy mentioned. Um. Like, give yourself a time limit and then force yourself to try to complete your whatever you're doing, whatever you're painting, as much as possible by that time limit. Um. And like, this is a very common practice. This isn't just something we're saying. This is something that's really like mm -hmm. even art <clears throat> art majors do this. When I was in drawing one, that's something we did was we did life drawings and we started by doing um, one minute drawings then we did 45 second drawings and we did 30 second drawings and we did 15 second drawings and we finally <laughs> did 10 second drawings um, to where we had like a model in the center of the classroom and he would be like 
All right, 15 seconds is up. Switch. Since he was switched positions, we have to, like, throw our paper. <laughs> um, and he's eventually like, you have to do this so quick. If your paper flies off your pad, whatever, just let it fly. So people like, throwing papers all over the classroom. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. But I can imagine. <laughs> what that does is it make it forces you to create quick lines. So the concept of what we are learning is that we have only have a certain time out, uh, like like to paint something or or draw something. So we're using charcoal, and what painting quickly forces you to do, and how you should look at it is you should look at what you're painting because we're drawing from like visually seeing because that's one of the quickest ways to draw is look at something then draw it rather than pulling it from your mind. Um, and because it skips a few steps because you don't have to visualize something, you just see it. Uh, and what it forces you to do is it create, it forces you to create, um, how do you put this precise thought out lines as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. So it's not that I'm just drawing lines because that's the first step is honestly just drawing lines. Even if you're awful, just do it. <laughs> um, because you get comfortable with drawing lines, you get comfortable with hand-eye coordination. Um, and then as you're painting quickly, what our teacher would try to stress uh, that we should do is make well thought out lines, um, methodical lines, like look at negative space, which is really important when drawing visually, and then look at the contours and lines and where other lines intersect, where other lines meet, where other lines match up or almost parallel in certain angles and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then look at those lines and then draw as quickly as we possibly can while taking in those certain things into account. So as you try to draw quicker, you will eventually pick up little things of like how to draw something more to scale or more to the correct size or make it look more like a pony than it should. So if you're being forced to do 30 minute challenges, even long, yeah. there's something online that um, uh, there's a lot of places online. Actually, you can just Google it. Um, that where it has a bunch of pictures of models, uh, like human models, and then you can set a timer for how long you get to draw those models. So um, have Photoshop, whatever program you're drawing in, or even just draw on paper and put um, that thing in the background um, and have it go in increments of 30 seconds and keep changing and draw on paper or your tablet as close as you can as fast as you can of those pieces in like every 30 second increments or one minute increments if you're not comfortable 30 try one minute and then move to 30 mm -hmm. and eventually like if you just do that like three or four days in a row or uh, like four weeks in a row every weekend when you get time like the fourth week when you start drawing those things if you look at the drawings you started with they'll look like crap in comparison <laughs> to the drawings that you're ending with yeah i have my art portfolio behind me of like my sketch pad the stuff in the front of that looks friggin terrible but the stuff in the back of that i'm actually pretty proud of um and those are those 30 second drawings we were doing in class because we did it twice yeah now that being said an awesome idea would be to like get a bunch of pictures of ponies like if you have a favorites gallery of ponies or something get a whole bunch of pictures of ponies um just a whole bunch put them in like a, a file like a single file like one big file and then start a Windows slideshow and then set that slideshow to 30 seconds or whatever and then start sketching those bloody ponies as fast as possible. <laughs> and there you go. You have a pony inspired artistic practice session thing. There you go. Yeah, it's actually not Do a bad it. idea. <laughs> that's yeah, that's that's sense. That's what I just thought. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything else to say about that. <laughs> yeah, because. To, to increase your speed about something, you just have to increase your comfortability with it. Mm -hmm. And the only way you're going to increase your comfortability with drawing something quickly is to try drawing it quickly, do it awful, and then try to become better. Yep. Um, that's the only way with anything. So it's like, friggin' draw it quick. Make it look like crap. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And when it looks like crap, you're like, I did it. I made something look like crap. I have achieved my goal. <laughs> and then you make it look less like crap, and now you're an artist. Yeah. There you go. Ponies. Ponies. All right. Okay. So one uh, one, one more question. question. Uh, it's gonna have to be kind of quick. Uh, you find yourself suddenly thrown into the world slash setting of one of the art pieces that you reviewed in this episode. Which one is it? Why? And what would you do upon your arrival? Sent in by. Do you want to pronounce her name? Because I know I know she's Ila. gonna hate. Uh, it's. <laughs> uh, I thought it was Isla Wolf. Isla Wolf. Lila Wolf. Elia Wolf. It's Elia Wolf. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Isla Wolf. Whether she loves us or hates us, uh, we love you too, E. Isla Wolf. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Yes. 
Um, oh god. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Um, hmm. I wouldn't want to be in one of the painting ones because then I'll be all sticky. <laughs> and covered in dried paint. Valid point. Valid point. That is it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, I think I've got to go with the Cosmic Unicorn piece that we, that, that last piece that we did. Um, and I would probably just, um, take a nap in the middle of the outdoors <laughs> yeah right it's so peaceful yeah it looks amazing hey i'd probably be in the i'd probably be in the uh, good boy picture by sofa cabra yeah. yeah i was thinking because about saying that it'd be I, fun to play yeah, catch with big I, I mac. Want a yeah. big mac pet <laughs> <laughs> i want a pet big mac oh uh, uh, i'll throw a tennis ball for him i want to be fetch. best friends with discord and reform yeah them. Mm-hmm. Be his friend. I wouldn't yeah. inform him. It's easy as that, right? That, what right? fun is there in making anyway. sense? <laughs> it's so true. Uh, okay. So yeah, same thing. Um, the Discord one because playing fetch with Big Mac would probably be fun. Mm-hmm. Or um, the Sunrise in Equestria because I mean it's like uh, you're you're. It's the point of that piece is to be ultimately surreal and create um like a, a one of the most perfect visual settings that like you can think of or see and being placed in that would be pretty wonderful maybe in fact maybe too wonderful mm. yeah it'd be it'd know. be wonderful overload or something i don't know well not just wonderful overload it's like sometimes you just have to be happy with the world you're placed in rather than always dreaming of being in the surreal and um, so i don't know i'd probably <laughs> i'd probably enjoy the good don't boy be one deep. More. it's not time to be deep <laughs> uh, i have a uh, reputation to uphold on the show. He, he's right, right sir. <laughs> too, many, too many feels burn. Like I All must educate educates people <laughs> and stuff and feels. But anyway, um, despite my opinion, uh, I I'll go. I'll agree with Pinky Dash. A good boy one. It would be it'd be more fun. You'd be there for the silliness and the cartoonness rather than yeah. Um, dreaming of something you could never have. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Awesome. Thank you for your questions, guys. Yes. All right. Um. We love you. Pinky Dash, do you want to do this the first part of this, the uh, plugs? I, I can do them, I guess, yeah. Okay, okay, so we have a DeviantArt account, which is Kiriak Crusaders at DeviantArt, oh, sorry, dot .deviantArt.com. Um, go there to find any of the art that we featured in today's episode, plus previous episodes. Uh, more info on our upcoming uh, one-year anniversary stuff, um, plus all the links to our personal pages are on there if you want to talk to, it, talk to us individually. Um, I highly recommend not doing that because we're, we're just not right. We're all strange. <laughs> um, uh, we also have an email, which is kiyakrusaders at gmail.com. Uh, please send in any questions you can think for us to answer, um, either about art or about us personally, but still art, please, we've got quite a lot of the us questions. Need some more art ones. Yeah. Um, and also, we, that's the place we'll be accepting any stuff for our one year episode, all, all the fan stuff that you guys send in would be please send in through the email um, remember to put in the subject line what you're sending us so if it's stuff for the one year episode put one year episode or something similar in the subject line just so we can find it nice and easy um, yeah that's about all I've got yep we have a Facebook page which is facebook.com slash QDR Crusaders you can go there give us a like uh, we'll provide you with information on the day that we are doing a stream uh and we have a Twitter, which is at QDR Crusade. Uh, it's basically the same information as Facebook, plus a little bit more uh, in the event that we have technical issues or anything did, like that. Did you hear you can use hashtags on Facebook now? I did. I don't know <laughs> what use that will be, though. <laughs> we can be like, trends. hashtag trends. QDR Crusaders. You could see what's trending. Yeah, we could totally start the hashtag QDR. No, no, no. <laughs> Speaking of trends, something that's really cool I just saw on Reddit is... Uh... It's a little link that it will see. It'll show you in real time what everyone like on the internet is googling. Huh. So if something happens, like on the news or something, you'll see a huge influx of a whole bunch of people googling the same thing. Huh. Kind of cool. Interesting. Anyway, it's a new app that like Google made or something. Yeah. Trends. Yay. Hashtag swag. Uh, swag. Uh, hashtag so yeah, send send in your one year stuff and uh, yeah, we will see you next week with a special episode for our one year anniversary don't forget to send in the stuff
We're accepting audio and text. Yes. Yep. You don't always have to be the perfect. You don't have to be a perfect artistist to make like you don't have to make us fan arts. You can send us in. Send audio. us a minute of you love just you. saying. <laughs> Either way, just a minute of giggling. <laughs> <laughs> that assassin monkey. Won't I'm looking at make you. Make it in the episode. <laughs> but but send it uh, anyway. You can feel free to send us giggling, yeah. but we won't feature Aww. it. <laughs> just honest. Yeah. <laughs> just honest. Yeah, <laughs> <no. laughs> All right. Uh, well, whether you're in the live stream or on YouTube, we love you all the same. Thank you for coming out and supporting us. <laughs> Thank you, Flutter Plasma. Uh, I am Flutter Plasma 317. I'm Burn Plasma 01. And I'm Pinky Nap. I'm going to give a nap. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> Feel better, dude. I'll try. Guess who's back next week?